Welcome back, everyone. We hope you've had a good lunch. Um, we'll just go straight to it. Next up on the agenda, we have the presentation of the Hazara Genocide Archive, um, specifically the database and you know facts about, to make it more clear to you guys what it actually is that we do. Um, and I will be presenting it. As I said before, I'm Mechid Paiman. Um, I'm part of the team um, at Bullock Analyst Network regarding media, um, specifically the podcast. Yeah? My name is Mohammed Asif. Uh, it's about one year that I'm working with Bullock organization as a head of uh, archive. All right, so we have a short um, 10 minute presentation and then a few questions and then uh, that's it from us. Um, I will just be talking about the background in the beginning so you guys get an understanding of why this project uh, was made by Bullock. The project is the Hazara Genocide Archive that we want to establish and complete. Um, and this dates back to around the 1880s when Hazaras were actually subjected to genocide in various ways. And the religion was held against us, the official governments were held against us, the official armies were held against us, and in that way, up until today, the present day, ge genocide is still something that's happening to us. If you can just look at the definition of genocide, because as mentioned previously, it has a bit of a vague term. According to the UN uh, Genocide Convention from 1948, so just after World War II, I'll just read, uh, genocide means any of the following acts committed with the intent to destroy a national, ethnical, racial, or religious group, and A, killing members of the group, B, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group, C, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part, D, imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group, and E, forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. And basically, the world has seen genocide occurring to Hazaras every day, basically. Um, and it's been something that the world hasn't really noticed, hasn't really done anything about, and that is why we need to raise to the standard of the rest of the world, actually document the mass killing of Hazaras in Afghanistan and in Pakistan in order to have the proof that we need to show them here, this is our list of people that we've, um, that have, that are the victims, and this is what we need to do, and this is the help that you guys need to, or you guys need to help us with this to stop it. So basically, that's the background of this project. Um, next. Now, briefly about the way, the methodology of our work in the project. Um, Bulak collaborates with Hazara Organization for Peace and Equality, I'll just say HOPE, uh, and collects data on Hazara victims. So far, it's come up to over 2,000 um, victims data that has been added to the database. We have a public website, which we call the database, where every, uh, all the victims are shown and it's accessible to everyone. And then we also have a public uh, mapping of the different attacks that have occurred, both in Afghanistan and one in Pakistan. And we will show you both of these, or three of these later in our presentation. And also briefly, the purpose of this project, just to give you an overview. To raise awareness, that's the first thing. As I said, the rest of the world needs to know what is going on with the Hazaras and what is going on with the Hazara genocide that's occurring. Second of all, we need to document the genocide and the war crimes in order to have something tangible to show the rest of the world to the international community. We need to act as, uh, with this project as an intermediary between the victims and the recognized organizations such as the UN or you know, other recognized um, big organizations. Um, and on, under this, we've also done a ICC victim representation form, which we did back in 2021, um, on behalf of nearly 2,200 Hazara victims. So already now we see a process, but we're still in the beginning phase. 
And lastly, our purpose is with this project to just seek justice for the victims and raise their voices. Yeah. Now it comes to the strategy park. Here we have uh, data collection, data analysis, and functionality. As Michi told you that we are in the first phase of data collection. When we are collecting data, at least till it reaches till 95%, then we can step to the second phase. The second phase, then we analyze the consistency of the data, like the date of attack, the gender, the name, where it happened. After that, then we go to the functionality part. Then we can present to everyone. We, are, uh, we have the websites, the maps, and the whole data, data audio, and video documents. Next. Here we have the genocide website that it is publicly accessible to everyone. You can go to www www.hazaragenocide.com, you can see two attacks uh, that we have two categories, Pakistan and Afghanistan. You can go below that, you can see different attacks are listed with the dates and uh, the victims. As we shown a sample of one attack here. Here we have some data that they are categorized in different parts. Some of some of them, they are public, like gender, name, date of attack, who did the attack, like perpetrator, ISIS, or Taliban, or unknown, maybe. Uh, two others are like contacts, contact number, and residential address. They are kept pri private, and videos and audios that we have around 6 to 8% of videos and audios with the relatives and the victims that, the, that they are passing the, uh, this uh, tragedy and the target, uh, targeted attacks that happen in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, they are keep pri uh, private because uh, we cannot share publicly because of their security risk. And the most important point here is we can share only with the authorities that they can be granted that this data is uh, not made publicly to, uh, to others, to sins. Like I, uh, we can share to UN, ICC, and others. Uh, as you know, in the slides, we have uh, collected around 200 and 18 people we have in our archive, that five of 536 are in Pakistan, and around 50 hundreds are in Afghanistan. As you see the website, you can check the website. Here we have two parts, Afghanistan and Pakistan. Here we have an information per Persian that you can check. We uh, would like everyone to help us in finding the name of each victim. Here we have the genocide mapping that uh, block with Hob organization. They did the mapping of each attacks in Pakistan and Af Afghanistan. In Pakistan, around 218 attacks we have since 1998 till 2022 that we have the last attack in Pakistan in 2022 on 2nd March that two Hazar Amins are killed in Jinarot. And we have around 46 documented uh, attacks in Afghanistan that they, they are in different uh, provinces, Kabul, Bamiyan, Mazar, Kandahar, the last attack yesterday. Here is the link. We can share the link to everyone. You can see and you can search on, uh, on a Google. Here is the database. You can find the location and each targeted attacks that we are mapping where it happens, the attacks, 
and how many casualty, who, who uh, claims the responsibility, and all the information is here. And inside Afghanistan, we have this much documents, yet we have documented, and we are working on it, but it takes a bit time. Because in Afghanistan, we have since 1818 till today, and every day, new things happening, and we, we are working on it, and we need help of each person and everyone that they can share data with us. And the last part, there are some challenges with us that our team, that they are working in Afghanistan and Pakistan, they, have, they are facing while they are collecting. As today, one of our fellow, they went to Jinnah uh, Hospital in Kabul and Taliban beat, beat her. They did not allow her to collect the data. This is the problem, the real problem that they are facing each and every day in Afghanistan and Pakistan. And there are serious, uh, uh, serious safety problems for the victims and the families that they are, we, are, we cannot work properly, but we have to work slowly, slowly, and slowly. If you have any question. The Bakhsh Pakistan Mo has so worked with them. I'm جناب ساق محمدی یا دوست دیگه ما سوال کرد همراه هزار انکوائری ما بخش افغانستان هم داکمین دادیم بخش پاکستان هم دادیم که ما خودم کار کردم بخش پاکستان چه هم روی ویب سایت بوره یک دفعه این نقشه کویته هست تا کویته کسی ما سال 1998 تا حالا ما هم تارگیتیک تکس را کلگیشی لیست کردیم تا نا کویته نیه ما حتی هزارها در لاهور هم کشته شده تا کراچی هم کشته شده جاهای دیگه هم کشته شده کلیگیش لیست شده ولی اکثریت چی در کویتا بوده کویتا چون مویسی اتیک ما در کویتا داشتیم علمدار رود بود و هزار تاون بود در علمدار رود توین بلاست یک کس نوکر کلپ شد باز بیرون شد دوباره بلاست شد و همچنان هزار تاون که در پوشت سر کورس لندن شاید کلیگیش شما در کویتا اگر بوده باشین خبر دارین که در کجا بود این راه های کویتا یک منتحی میشه به هزار تاون مریابات قبلا راه های مختلف بود که مردم میتونست با بازار با آسانی بوره ولی از سال 2003 و بعد که می اتگا شروع شد بالای مردم مردم روز بر روز جمع شدن تا حال مثل یک سیفتی پاین برای هر هزاره در کویته کسایی که زندگی میکنه در هزاره تاون یا مرابات اینا باید اول چیک شونه کسی که غیر هزاره واردی هزاره تاون میشه یا مرابات میشه اونا باید چیک شنه بعد از داخل هزار رو تمیش شنه اینی راه های لائن های سرخ که نشان میده هر کدامش در یک مال شد پانزه اتفاق افتاده باشد اکثریت هم تارگیت کلینگ است جس تو منشن در این انگلیش رو کوک دیز آر دی اتاکس در اف هپن این بلوچستان مینلی این کویتا بر آبیسلی آسو دیفرن پلیسز مینلی این کویتا ور هزار از لیو اند منی اف دی روز roads that led into you know, the center of the city or the bazaar, um, they are now, you know, they have, that's where the attacks have occurred as we see, so that's why they're no longer safe and that's why Hazaras have had to regroup a lot. کار تحقیق شروع کردیم آیا در پاکستان اینمی قتل هایی که صورت گرفته ای را میتونین که جنوساید بگوین یک تفاوت بین قتل هایی که در افغانستان تای سالهای سال برای هزاره ها مشخص وجود داشته برای دیگه ها وجود داشته ما مشخص هزاره می چی تفاوت بین افغانستان پاکستان میبینیم در پاکستان در سال 2012-2013 ما اکثریت چی داریم که مشخص طور به نام هزار از موتر یا از بس میکشه سنگل اوت میکنه باز میکشه که ما به نام سمری کلینگ چی داریم ولی در افغانستان کم چنین اتفاق پیش آمده که مثلا طور از موتر کشته باشه بیزنه است ولی کمه بیشتر شی آمار انتحاریه 
just a side bomb battery or bomb explosion. Oh, okay. Um, one last question we do have time for, and I'll grab the one right here. Asif Aziz and Mechid Aziz, thank you for your time. در قسمت افتتاحی وبسایت شما توضیح دادین که ما یک قسمتی را باز کردیم که دوستان میتونن خودشان انفورمیشن را روان کنن و کانکت بکنن آیا بهتر نیست یک شورت ویدیو در موردش جور شود به صورت تبلیغات و در فضای مجازی چون هزاره ها فعلا پایگاه خبری خاص ندارن مخصوصا در توییتر فیسبوک و اینستاگرام که سه پایگاه اصلی هسته برای هزاره ها برای از اونا گفته شود که بتونن امی کار را انجام بدن نظر خودتان چی هسته و اگر لطف کنین روی آموزو قسمت برین در فارسی هم یک سری توضیحات را بدین که دوستان متوجه شان که در کجا کانکت کنن تشکر نظر نیکه ما بخش تیوری داریم و چند ویدیو داریم که ما عمومی درخواست کردیم ولی ویدیو مشخص که در مورد که بخوایم از مردم چی کنیم ویدیو نداریم ولی داینده شاید جور کنیم the question was whether we, how can we get, you know, this out so that we can actually reach people that can help us to fulfill or give more data to it. Um, and the answer, and a suggestion is that we change the website also to give uh, the text out in English as well as in Dari, for example. Um, and also we have made a short introduction video about this that we've sent out to a specific place um, in Australia, but that will also eventually come together and we will make it more we will try to like spread it out more so that people can actually help us and give us the data that we need. Thank you very much. <laughs>